Okay, this sermon's entitled, The Preservation of God's Word. The Preservation of God's Word. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach your, your word and to explain um, what, your, what your word says about this, this, on this subject of preservation. Keep us safe. Bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you have a King James Bible, then you got the right Bible. If you got it some other phony baloney translation, you got the wrong Bible. Because the other translations take out God's word. Jesus made it very clear. Well, let's open up with a few verses in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. It says, in verse 4, this is Jesus talking. But he answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up, into the holy city and set him on a, a pinnacle of the temple. Now, the Bible makes it very clear in verse verse four. You, we, we can't live. We can't live by uh, by some modern translation that contains a lot of omissions. Where they take out not only verses but but you know parts of verses. Now there are verses that are taken completely out of the uh, NIV and the other modern translations. Like for instance, in Matthew chapter, I believe it's chapter um, eighteen. Let's just let me go ahead and just turn there. Let me find. The, let me show you this verse. It's been taken. It's been completely taken out. So if it, if the verse is taken out, you know it's not God's word because the Bible says Jesus Himself said, "Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God." Not some words, every word. And this entire verse is taken out of the NIV. Matthew eighteen eleven. It's in the King James Bible, but it's not in the other translations. Let's, let's go ahead and turn there. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Now, that verse is completely removed. I don't know why it's removed, but it's removed, nevertheless. So that tells you right there that, that, that the NIV is not God's word. See, God, pre God preserved uh, the King James Bible. And I'd like to um, prove that. You know, so let's go ahead and turn over to the book of uh, turn over to Psalms. Now, the Bible makes it very clear that we are preserved. Those that are saved are preserved forever. Turn to Psalm uh, 37. Um, it says in verse 28, For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. So it tells you that once you're saved, you're, re you're preserved forever. But see, God's word is also preserved. Turn back to Psalm 12. Look at verse 7. And let's start off with verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace. Now think about it. He preserves his words. It's like when you when you preserve um, you know something else. Like you preserve you know a fruit or, or peanut butter. You put it in a jar. You put it in a container. God's word has been through you know literally like a furnace, and it says that, that the words are, are purified. So that's how you know that the words are going to go on forever because they withstood you know the t you know this process. So let me go ahead and just read this again. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Now look at verse 7. This makes it clear. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. Preserve what? God's words. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. <clears throat> so the fact that we still have the King James Bible is proof that um, God's words are being preserved. Now, let's go over and take a look at some more verses that, that talk about this. Turn over to 1 Peter. And let's go ahead and take a look at uh, chapter 1. It talks about the preservation of God's word. And let's start off with verse 30, uh, excuse me, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof fall, you know, falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So God's word going to, is going to go on forever, period. Now there have been people throughout, the, throughout time, throughout history, who have, who have basically made statements like, real, uh, real pompous statements, like, well, they, they hope God's word would eventually you know, go away. And it's just not, it hasn't ever happened. It's never going to happen. So turn back to Isaiah. Let me go ahead and show you another verse that proves this. Isaiah chapter 
chapter number 40 uh, talks about, you know, God's word going on forever. This is found again. It says in verse 6, The voice said, Cry, and he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is, a, is grass, and the, and the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth. Now, what, what, what does it mean to wither? It means to fade away. It's to die. Grass withers. The flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forever. And that's proof that God preserves his word. It's, it's preserved. And the Bible talks about, you know, the word of God. Let me just go ahead and turn to John 1. The word, the word of God has always been here. And it always will be. That's just the way it is. And that's good. But we need to be glad that, that this is the, the case. John chapter 1. It's basically describing the word as Jesus Christ is the word. You know, he's the word made flesh. He died on the cross for everyone's sins. And he gives eternal life as a free gift. And I need to point that out in every sermon pretty much because I don't know who's listening. There could be some lost person out there listening that needs to be saved. And um, that's why you don't have to worry. God's word is always going to be around. And this is just you know the way it is. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So that's all I have. God preserves His Word. Okay, so the Bible makes it very clear that God's Word is preserved. And uh, so I'd like to close with Matthew chapter 5, verse uh, 17 and 18. It says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. That tells us right there that uh, God's word is going to go on forever and God preserves his word. So I'd like to just close in prayer. Our dear God, thank you for allowing us to have this, uh, you know, your word that tells us the truth. And uh, just pray that you allow us to understand, um, you know, what your word says and just keep us keep us uh, safe and give us God's speed as we uh, just as we go out to serve you. It's all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>